Is that what you're arguing here? And I just want to address you correctly. What's your name? I mean, you just came on my show. You don't know my name. My name's Anna. I don't actually. I thought I was talking okay. to Jenk. What's your name? My name Anna, is Anna. Anna. Anna, good. No, we're gonna be chatting for a while. I just wanted to address you conversationally. You're prepared for the so interview Anna, ahead of time. So, so, well, Anna, you guys invited me on your show. I'm making some time for you guys. I'm happy to have the open debate. Let's let's get some facts actually straight here. I so thought you were detail making, oriented. I don't know. It's just you're the one. You are making. <laughs> I, I didn't mean that as a personal affront, Anna. I promise you. And I'm and I'm looking forward to getting into substance with you. So the reality is, you're making an assertion that he broke the law. And then everything that you're doing is working backwards, making a legal judgment on a complex legal theory that has never been brought against a defendant in American history. So that's a circular reasoning, it's a circular loop. No. All right, guys, so we gotta talk about this pretty wild interview with Vivek Ramaswamy and TYT, Chank and Anna Kasparian. Now, Cenk initially said that he would not be able to partake in the interview because he's a presidential candidate, even though he's not constitutionally allowed to be president of the United States. But he filed a run anyways, even though he can't, based off this fringe legal theory <laughs> that was presented or argued in some fringe case law by a lunatic. And he's basically saying, look, I'm going to run even though I know that is unconstitutional. I'm going to do it anyways. I'm going to scam people out of their money, okay? And I'm going to pretend like I'm going to take this to the Supreme Court. And I'm going to be allowed to become president of the United States, even though it's clearly unconstitutional. He's not a natural-born citizen of the United States, okay? Now, the irony here is that Chank, who is basically knowingly attempting to break the law because the constitution is the law of the land him and anna kasparian are gonna lose their minds over the fact that vivek ramaswamy is saying look i would pardon trump on all the federal charges against him if he's found to be guilty because i think that trump is being politically persecuted that they are charging trump using untested uh, legal theories that we really, again, we've never seen this done before and it's not good for the country. So if I become president of the United States, I'm going to pardon Trump. Now, again, this is ironic. And the reason why it is ironic that Chank is getting so upset about this is because he is literally knowingly attempting to break the law based off a fringe legal theory, but he's upset about Trump unknowingly, allegedly breaking the law when it comes to uh, testing a fringe legal theory that was presented to him by his lawyer, John Eastman, in regards to the contingent electors plot, right? Which is the plot to send an alternative slate of electors to Congress contingent on the legal outcomes of Trump's challenges to the election in court, which Democrats and Jack Smith, Joe Biden's DOJ, is charging Trump with conspiracy, okay, uh, based off this alternative electors plot. Now, here's the thing. Uh, they have to prove that Trump knew that this was illegal and that he uh, knew that he didn't win the election. Otherwise, uh, there is precedent to suggest that what he did was not illegal. It may have been a bad judgment, like Vivek Ramaswamy says all the time, but it wasn't necessarily illegal because one, he didn't know, okay, that it was illegal. Uh, and two, he legitimately believed that the election was stolen. And when an election is contested, uh, like for example, in uh, Hawaii back in the 1960s, Republicans and Democrats sent their slate of electors to Congress because they believed that they won that state, right? So again, Trump's defense is there, okay? I'm just outlining a layman's version of Trump's defense okay but again chank and anna are gonna lose their minds at Vivek simply saying well look i want to pardon trump because i believe that this is untested waters and this is a bad precedent to set to uh politically persecute a former president of the united states which is clearly what is happening so without further ado i, I want to react to it because it gets pretty hilarious and wild other that's wrong do you believe it's a good precedent to implement a slate of fake electors to overturn the results of our democratic process and go against the will of the american voters 
So look, I think that there were serious issues that need to be discussed relating to election integrity. However, I would not have made those same judgments that Donald Trump did. This though belongs to the voters. This is a judgment for the voters of this country, not a judgment for a justice system that lands people in prison as its ultimate goal, especially political opponents. I just think that's bad for the United States of America. So leave it to the voters, trust the voters to make the decision of who governs instead of trying to take it out of the voters hands. And I don't think that should be a controversial idea. Yeah, it's definitely controversial because what you're saying is- uh, Leaving it to the voters is controversial. No, 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 not not that, that, hold on, hold on. When the former president broke laws, including going against the will of the American voters by implementing a slate of fake electors, which were noted as such in memos passed around within the Trump campaign. They were referred to as fake and fraudulent electors. That's a lie, right? That's a lie. The mainstream liberal media is referring to them as fake and fraudulent electors. The Trump campaign, uh, the Trump team referred to them as contingent electors because again what they were trying to do was to preserve a remedy to overturn the election contingent based off what happens in the legal proceedings remember trump was challenging the elections in court now again regardless of whether or not you agree with it right uh again what this really comes down to is does this man have the right does anybody have the right to feel that an election was stolen and to take action to preserve the remedy for fixing an election if it is found to actually had been fraudulent, right? That is what they were trying to do, right? And essentially what Jack Smith and Democrats and Joe Biden and the DOJ are trying to do is essentially say, no, you can't do that, right? You can't, you cannot question the outcome of the election. You cannot challenge it legally. You cannot preserve the remedy or try to have a contingent slate of election of electors just in case you win your legal battles. No, you can't do that, right? You can't do that. Okay, this is what they're trying to say. Despite the fact that this has happened before, for example, 1960 Hawaii's election between uh, Nixon and Kennedy, um, Kennedy ended up winning only after the initial count showed Nixon had won. And then both Democrats and Republicans submitted their own electors because the state was super close, right? They both parties thought they had won. A court ordered a recount and found that Kennedy actually had won, okay? And his electors were accepted, right? So again, elections have been contested throughout all of United States history. This is not unprecedented what Trump did. It has been done before. But again, because it's Trump, that's why they're trying to charge him and throw him in jail for it. Even though, again, this stuff has been done before in the past, okay? And that's the point that Vivek is trying to make here that, you know, these dunces don't understand because their Trump derangement syndrome, okay, uh, clouds their judgment, right? They really want to see Trump in jail. And the Trump derangement syndrome is going to get even more out of control here. By Trump's co-conspirators. That is part of the evidence. Another piece of evidence that I think is compelling, to say the least, is that they had uh, fake electors in the state of New Mexico, which had absolutely no pending litigation in regard so to look, uh, election we have a court fraud. And illegal system. Yeah, but see, here's the thing. <laughs> this is what she's leaving out. Trump did, in fact, challenge or submit a legal challenge in New Mexico before the deadline for the elector votes. Also, on top of that, Uh, those certificates, specifically the one in New Mexico and Pennsylvania, stated that they will only take effect if the Trump campaign's challenges to the election were sustained in court. Again, that's a detail that Anna Kasparian leaves out for whatever reason. And if you want to go into the details of this, the First Amendment absolutely protects, and courts have held this for a long time, dating back to a case called Alvarez, I think it was in 2012, that political officials, including elect- including candidates for election, unfortunately, like it or not, have the First Amendment right not to tell the truth. That's just a fact, it's not something that we so should Donald necessarily- So Donald Trump was lying, so Donald Trump was well, lying. I- 
I, I, that's for the courts to decide. But what so I'm telling you So then he guys should be is, tried if, if it's for the courts to decide. And we live just, in a country of laws, and he's being charged with a very important so uh, I, I actually disagree criminal with you act. Object. Why do you get to decide instead of the court system and say, oh, just let him off? Who cares what that is? Because the nobody is? else has been charged under the same set of facts. Because you no one else tried to do a coup against America with a fake that's elector scheme. False. Do you know a second but, person who's ever been accused of that? We've had contested elections dating back to the late 1800s in this country, and a lot. Yeah, but no one ever down. did fake electors was, and it, tried Cheng. to do a coup, yeah. Vivek. See again, this is where Chang again. Look at the election 1960 in Hawaii. Okay, I just explained what went down, but this idea that alternative or contingent electors has never been used before when you're contesting the outcome of the election in the state is just false. Right, it's false. It's it's like it's it's something that they say to try to play off people's ignorance. When again, elections have been contested throughout all of U.S. history, and these people are pretending that it's some new thing because Trump did it in 2020. It's it's ridiculous, right? It really is. So, are you saying because this is really important? Because good for the goose is good for the gander. So, you're saying Donald, so Joe Biden, on his way out, can take any national secrets and show them to anyone he likes. He can maybe you could even sell them. Whatever he could just take them. Who cares? He can sell them. Maybe even sell them. Right? Maybe even sell them. Again, this guy is a full blown Alex Jones. I ain't even gonna throw Alex Jones. I ain't gonna do Alex Jones like that. But this guy is a tinfoil hat conspiracy guy, right? He's trying to allege that Trump sold uh, nuclear secrets <laughs> to other countries. This is what this guy alleges with no evidence whatsoever, right? This is what he's saying. But again, this is the same tinfoil hat fool that believes he can be president of the United States based off a fringe legal theory, right? But again, Trump's not allowed to challenge an election, though, based off a uh, fringe legal theory that I think is less fringe than this guy's theory about why he can be president of the United States despite not being a natural born citizen. It's amazing stuff. The hypocrisy here is stunning, right? I think Chank, by his own arguments, his own standards, he should be thrown in jail, right? He should be he should be charged with conspiracy to defraud the United States simply for attempting to run and to take people's money, knowing damn well that he can't run, right? Knowing damn well that he can't be president of the United States. But then again, I'm not sure if it's actually illegal to run, okay, even though he knows he can't actually be president. But again, I'm just saying, by his own logic that he applies to Trump when it comes to the 2020 election, he should be charged with conspiracy to defraud the U.S. government, right? Because of him trying to run for president, even though he knows that he cannot actually be president. Hold so on. I'm pretty clear about this. You okay. can't sell them. Okay, all right. But if, he's, if Donald Trump is charged I, with I, selling them, are just, we allowed to try him then? Or do we just have to let him go no matter what he's we're, charged we're, with? We're going to be on for most of an hour, so I think it's just important for you to understand something about me. I care about the details. Facts actually matter. I don't care about you care about the details random as well. jousting. And uh, you just implemented a law having so, to do with political speech of a president and extended yes. it to the actions of the actions. president. If the actions no, of the president are criminal, if he should be held name, to the, the same. Way, Excuse Jane. me, I'm still speaking. Can you please let me what's finish my so statement? Yeah. Okay. okay. With the actions of the president happen to be illegal actions. Actions, especially in the context of our democratic process. You genuinely believe that that individual should not be held accountable for what he engaged in. You think that so what's any your name? former sitting president of the United States can attempt to steal elections, can attempt to implement fake electors and go against the will of the American people. Is that what you're arguing here? And I just wanna address you correctly, what's your name? I mean, you just came on my show, you don't know my name? My name's Anna. I don't actually, I thought I was talking okay. to Jenk. What's your name? <laughs> My name Anna, is Anna. Anna. Anna, good. No, we're gonna be chatting for a while. I just wanted to address you conversation. Should have prepared for the so interview Anna, ahead of time. So, so, well, Anna, you guys invited me on your show. I'm making some time for you guys. I'm happy to have the open debate. Let's let's get some facts actually straight here. I so thought you were detail making, oriented. I don't know. It's just you're the right, one. You are making. I, I didn't mean that as a personal affront, Anna. I promise you. And I'm and I'm looking forward to getting into substance with you. Look, here's the thing. Anna may be having some red pill moments when it comes to pushing back against the far left. But best believe, she's a part of the 20 to 30% of the population that has a severe case of Trump derangement syndrome, right? And no matter how red pill she may get on pushing back against the far left, she will always have a severe case of Trump derangement syndrome. Her co-host literally has such a severe case that he's pretending like he's running for president, right? He's trying to defraud the United States 
by running for president, knowing damn well he is not eligible to be president. And she sat there with a straight face and then laugh her ass off while this man was talking about his cuckoo for Cocoa Puff scheme to try to be president of the United States, which by the way, I mean, it never would, ha it would never would get to the point where he'd be able to challenge it because he'll never get enough votes, right? He'd never get enough votes to actually even get to the point where he could challenge it. Okay. But regardless, Anna and Chank both have a very severe case of Trump derangement syndrome. And that's what you're seeing here. So the reality is you're making an assertion that he broke the law. And then everything that you're doing is working backwards, making a legal judgment on a complex legal theory that has never been brought against a defendant in American history. So that's a circular reasoning. It's a circular loop. No, what I would no, it's do not. Is Vivek, that doesn't because make any sense. What you're saying, Vivek, we're not making this the, legal theory. But Vivek, you're going in circles. Hold on, let's be clear. Nope. So what, we're not making the assertion. Prosecutors are making that assertion. And you're saying, do not let do, uh, the prosecutors do their job. Foreclose that. I don't want to no, discuss not, this. I'm hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. So, can, can Joe Biden do a fake elector scheme and just make up electors and, just, and declare himself president as Donald Trump wanted to do? And you admitted earlier he is lying. Donald Trump was lying. And so can no. Joe Biden lie and say, I've got fake electors and I'll even call them fake electors. And then you're not allowed to prosecute them. Contingent electors. Again, <laughs> these people are out of their minds. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, Cenk. If Joe Biden wants to do that, he can. Will it work? No, right? But again, I'm not going to sit here because I know history and say that, oh, well, this just shouldn't be allowed because we've had instances where the election has been challenged and it's been overturned and both parties submitting their electors mattered, right? It actually mattered, okay? Because they both thought that they won. So yeah, Joe Biden should be allowed, but that doesn't mean it's going to work. The fact that it didn't work tells you that, okay, well, the system is, is working the way that it, it should work, right? Which again, it's just, it's, it's so funny how these people, again, this guy, thinks that it is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs what Trump is what Trump did, right? And wants him thrown in jail, but this is the same guy knowingly trying to run for president, knowing damn well he is not eligible. Right? It's just amazing. It's like the pot calling the kettle black. Because you just said that's it. No one's allowed to prosecute former presidents. Go ahead. So is Joe Biden allowed well, to do the same exact which, thing Donald Let me Trump? just ask you guys a question, because I, I think I'm getting a sense or for you your command question. of the details here. Which case would you like to talk about? There, the there fake are four electors. Go ahead, fake electors. Which, which, is Joe Biden one? allowed you, to do the same thing? One fake of you is talking scheme. about documents, and one of you is talking about Because he about broke so many laws, but let's stick with fake electors. electors. So go ahead. Which one would you like to discuss? Fake electors, we'll go, go ahead. Time. Yeah. So there is no crime here that can be charged. That's the answer. <laughs> There's no relevant crime. Now, can voters take this into account when determining who their next president is? Absolutely. That's exactly how our process works. But our constitution has a process that has been followed and it was followed here. And the US president absolutely, even if he's the outgoing president, has an opportunity to share his opinion. Even if those opinions are not true and if that's found in a court of law, I don't have a view on that, but that's what the allegations are. That's there what a court of law strong. is, Vivek, but you're saying we're not allowed to go to a court of law. I'm not saying that you're not allowed to. I'm saying that I would pardon him because I think that these do not match the actual law that the Supreme Court has held applying to these set of facts. And I think it's a bad judgment for the US Justice Department to bring this case because it divides the country and it sets an awful precedent that will now be used going forward for years unless we do something about it. Unless it takes a leader who actually unites this country. This is the new precedent in the United States of America. What's the new precedent is the party in power will look at who the opponent is and throw the legal statute book at them. That's not how it's supposed to work. You're supposed to find a crime and then decide whether or not you wanna prosecute it according to the same standards you use for every American. That is not what's happening here. And there is little doubt that if Donald Trump were not running for president, they would not have brought these charges. So I think that if you ask me, does this move towards uniting the country or not? I think it does not. I think it moves towards dividing the country, which is why I have been clear, even though I'm running against Donald Trump, 
I would pardon him if I'm elected president because that will move this nation forward. And I do not think that we should be guided by vengeance and grievance against one man. I do not think that that helps the United States of America. That's why I'm in this race and that's why I clearly answer your question. You asked me why would I pardon, that's why I would pardon. And just to be clear, you have absolutely no problem with the Trump campaign implementing fake electors in the state of New Mexico, which had no pending litigation in regard to election fraud. You're okay with that? Yeah, but he did submit a legal challenge in New Mexico and those alternative certificates stated that they will only take effect if the legal challenges were sustained in courts. Again, I'm not sure why Anna is leaving it out, but it goes back to what Vivek was saying. Their command for the details, right, is uh, it, it leaves a lot to be desired, right? They don't care about the details. They're just saying things um, to try to smear Trump, okay, um, <clears throat> without actually going into the, the, the real details of what happened. There is a difference between Answer what I've question. made the same judgment. Yes or no? I don't think that's illegal. I do not think, you don't that think that's anything illegal. that's been laid out. Okay, you don't value don't our think, democratic process. Great to hear it. I don't think it. anything that's uh, laid out has been a violation of the law. That's what I believe. That's amazing. Okay, all right. Hence the conspiracy charge, right? The conspiracy charge is, well, we think he didn't really commit a crime, right? But we think, we think that he tried to commit a crime, right? He knowingly tried to commit a crime, right? That's what the conspiracy charge here is. It's just so funny how, again, the command for the details in regards to exactly what he's being charged with uh, is left out in his interview. They don't really want to talk about it uh, because, again, what he did was not a crime, okay? Um, and these people, they want, but again, because they really want to throw Trump in jail, they want to see Trump behind bars. They get pissed off because there's a guy that says, well, you know, I, I would just pardon Trump. <laughs> I would pardon Trump so that he doesn't actually have to sit in jail behind what is obviously politically motivated uh, charges. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.